So we stopped yesterday th or Friday finishing this problem. So we're ready to do the next thing. And we're going to do rotations. Those are the easier ones to do. And we're starting that right now. Good. So these are going to be solids of rotation. So what that means, we're going to take a shape, we're going to revolve it, and it's going to revolve into a solid. So what type of shape? It's going to be a two-dimensional region that will revolve into a three-dimensional shape. So one example, here's an axis that we're going to revolve around. Now I'm going to just draw a curve above it, and then we're going to think about what does this curve revolve into if I revolve it around. So the way to pretend that you're artistic is just copy that curve you just drew, and then we're going to make another copy of it, but the mirror image. That's usually the harder part. Just do your best. And now we're going to try to make it look like it was actually revolved. So in a similar way that you drew your cone, I'm going to do something very similar right here. So it should look vaguely three-dimensional, like a, I don't know, chess piece or something. So we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to slice this up. So we're going to slice it up. And there's only one way that makes sense to slice this thing. If I sliced it like this, with a plane like this, I would get the worst cross sections ever. They would all look different. Some cross sections would have multiple pieces. So I think we can all see it's a really bad way to slice this guy up. So let's not do that. And we're going to slice perpendicular to the axis of rotation. So we're going to slice this way. So we make a slice. Draw your best slice you can right there. Good news is the shape of a slice is super nice. Oh, I had my dotted on the wrong side. All right, now it's perfect. There we go. What shape is the cross section going to be, no matter what cross section I take? It's all circles. Super easy area formula. So this, if this is the x-axis right here, we'll go a to b. So first x value is a, last x value b. So what I need now is a radius. So I will draw that little radius right there. Now I'm going to redraw my cross section way bigger down here. So what I need is radius. And it depends on what x value that I'm using at that moment. So I need a function r of x. And our volume is pretty easy to write down. ax dx from a to b. In this case, our area, I can write down a nice formula for area. What is the formula for area of this shape right here, this circle, if you know the radius is r of x? So what is my area formula here? You know the radius is r of x. 2 pi r of x squared. That'd be circumference, which we will be doing at some point. Wait, two, yeah, just pi r squared. Yeah. yeah. Was that too easy of a question? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, radius is not a constant number. It's r <coughs> of x, a function of x. So you just got to square that function, multiply by pi. So we got pi r of x squared dx. So this is a rotation, a solid of rotation. Of course, pi is a constant, so you can bring pi out front of your integral. So we got pi a to b. Now 
Now I complained at some point about trig function notation. This r squared of x, only in trig land does this mean exponent, or uh, yeah, exponent of the entire uh, value. So I strongly suggest you avoid exponential notation in functions at all times. Unless you're dealing with trig functions and that's just the way it goes with trig functions. I don't know why that decision was made, but I strongly recommend you never write that trig exponential notation. In fact, I don't even like writing it with trig functions, so don't ever write that with non-trig functions. What it really would mean is r of r of x. That's actually what it would mean. Do the r twice. So that's what it should equal, but again, let's just avoid that completely altogether. So we have our area formula, so let's go ahead and do an example. The circle x squared plus y squared equals a squared is rotated about the x-axis. Find the volume. So we have a circle, radius A, centered at the origin, easy to draw. So there's my circle. Rotate about the x-axis. We're going to rotate that way right there. What shape will we get when we rotate this? Sphere. So we're going to get a sphere. We already know the answer to this question. Who remembers the volume of the sphere? It's got pi in it. It's a volume, so it's going to be three-dimensional, or three linear measurements multiplied together. Now for the way to impress us, anybody know the constant? It's an over, it's four, three, four. four thirds. Now most, uh, anything that has a circle in it is going to have some pi and generally when uh, cones and spheres both have thirds in them, I think a cone is one third and sphere is four thirds. All right, so what is our radius here? Yeah, the number A. So we have four thirds pi A squared cubed. All right, that's the answer we are hoping to work for. So let's go ahead and do calculus. I didn't do any calculus. We just use some formula that you just accepted at some point <coughs> when somebody told you this is the volume of a sphere. And you're like, oh, okay, definitely. So how do I get a, I, first I need to draw a three-dimensional volume and then I'm going to slice it. So let's go ahead and draw a three-dimensional. How in the world do you draw a three-dimensional sphere? Very carefully. that right there. Easy to do. Circle with a really small or really short ellipse in the middle. Dot the back. So I could put a center in here. Uh, what I really want to do is look at a cross section though. So rotating about the x-axis on this problem I could have rotated about the y-axis but I'm going to pay attention to which axis I rotated around. Uh, I when I say I could rotate around the y-axis because the shape we get is exactly the same. Because the circle has so much symmetry, it doesn't matter what axis I pick. Uh, but because we went around the x-axis, I'm going to cut perpendicular to the x-axis. So I'm making my cuts like this. So that is the slice I'm going to make. And every solid of rotation, your slices, if you cut it right, it's going to be a circle. So it should always get circles if they started with the volume of rotation. So I need right here a radius. So I'm doing my best to label R of X, that vertical line I just 
put right there. That's R of X. So if I go back to the two-dimensional version, let me label R of X right here. That vertical line is R of X. So any questions on two-dimensional versus three-dimensional? You do have a big advantage here if you're good at drawing. How do I figure out the formula for R of X? So first of all, do you agree R of X is the Y value of the point on the graph? So R of X equals Y. How do I relate X and Y together? What is the equation for the circle here? And I think we don't have to actually use our brains, so we can just look back. All right, so I know how X and Y are related on the circle. X squared plus Y squared equals A squared. How do I figure out Y? Just solve for it. Subtract X squared, square root. That's all there is to it. Y equals square root A squared minus X squared. So now we know our, uh, how to write Y in terms of X, and this is R of X. Once we know R of X, we're ready to pretty much use the um, use that formula, wherever it is, pi integral AB R of X squared DX. good news is squared cancels square root. So that's going to be very nice. Makes the integral a lot easier. What about A and B, the endpoints? Is it hmm. just 2A to 0? It'll be, well, to be careful, if we look over here, I can go from negative A to regular A. I'm using A for two different things, but A, we go from negative A to regular A right there. So negative A is our start. Regular A, positive A is the end. Once we have this, we have a lot of symmetry here. We could, instead of go all the way from negative A to A, I can go zero to A, keep it positive, and then double that. So basically find half the volume and then double that. So let's go ahead and use symmetry. So we're using symmetry. We have two pi integrals, zero to a. I'm gonna clean up as a squared minus x squared dx. Now from here, we know the answer. So let's go ahead and see, does calculus give us the same thing that you were told in elementary school? Or is that all a lie? Hopefully not. So go ahead and finish off the integral. Four thirds pi cubed. Anybody know formula for surface area of a sphere? All 
All right. You can relate service area to volume using calculus, which you'll learn in Calc 3 or 4. I think Calc 4. Nobody knows service area for a sphere? Is that what you're looking up? All right, so this is separate. This is side note foreshadowing right here. So easy question, what's the derivative of 4 thirds pi x cubed? <coughs> it's 4 pi x squared. What's your service area? Oh yeah. This is also the service area right here. So this gets into Green and Stokes' theorem, depending on what dimension you're in. Crazy stuff. Anyways, not relevant for now. So I'm going to cross it out. So now we're going to look at, uh, well, do one more example problem. Then we'll look at hollow, how to deal with a hollow interior. So this example, we're going to get the, you're going to see me write region bounded by so many times. I'm going to use RBB for region bounded by. I want to find the volume. Of the solid generated by revolving region bounded by y equals square root x, y equals 1, and x equals 4. About the line y equals 1. So you need a good graph to start out with. The equations are super easy to graph. The only one that's a little tricky, y equals square root x. You can graph y equals square root x, I believe in you. So graph out this region. Most of them are horizontal or vertical lines. Start you out with y equals one graph right there. So there are three curves that are bounding our region. There's the square root one, which I didn't draw all the square root, just a little part of it. I only need to go really from zero to four. I don't have to go past four. Well, I'll draw them out a little further. So this, what we just did, splits up the region into a lot of pieces. But only one piece is actually bounded. And it's sort of the obvious piece right in the middle. What do I mean by there's other pieces? There's a huge piece right up here that I'm not using. That's squiggle part. There's another piece down here in the lower right. I'm not using these infinitely large pieces. So there's only one piece actually bounded. And that's that sort of wedge-shaped piece right there. Probably the one you were thinking about already. We're doing something weird. We're rotating about y equals 1. So I'm drawing my rotation arrow right there on the y equals 1 line. So what does our, uh, our volume look like? <coughs> uh, 
that mouth makes me think of a whale. It's way cooler than those kind of a rocket. All right, so there's our volume right there. Let's cut it up. There's only one way to cut it. You gotta go perpendicular to your axis. So you don't have a choice. Cross sections are going to look like that. So again, all these cross sections better be circles. So every single cross section is gonna be a circle. And what I need is a radius. So I'm going to draw my radius here. That will correspond to that radius that I just drew. So this one's a little bit tricky because we're not going from the x-axis. The x-axis is way down here. Our radius doesn't actually touch the x-axis. So here's the important thing to remember. When I want r of x, what we're going to do is take the top y value minus the bottom y value. This is the idea of big minus small, or n minus start. So we're going to use this again and again, either big minus small, n minus start. Uh, we did this with vectors where you went to the end point, subtract the starting point. So this should be very familiar. We've done this a whole lot already. So r of x is going to be the big. So you have to think, is this the big x or the big y? Now if I look at this right here, x is the same. So it's not the big X or the small X, it's the big Y value, small Y value. So I'm going to write it as big Y minus small Y. So what is the big Y? Nope, it's not unknown. I'm going to label curves. There we go, big Y, small Y. Don't need to do too much thinking on this problem. Big one, small one. Square root x minus one. That's all there is. Big curve minus little curve. Why did I write, oh, that's an r of x, not a v of x. All right, so there's our radius. What x values do I need to go between here? What x values do I go between? One yep, one and four, not zero, because we're really starting where these two curves intersected right there. So one to four, and r of x square root x minus one squared dx. So I'm not going to do this integral, or I'm not going to actually do the calculus part of this question. You can do it. What do you need to do? to actually uh, get the uh, antiderivative. I try u sub, but if I go with square root x, what's the derivative of square root x? Something like negative one over square root x. There's like a half in there or something like that, but it's gonna be some square root of x that I can't cancel out. So u sub won't work. It's not quite trig substitution. The whole thing was in a square root, maybe. But then it would cancel out the squared. All of our calculus tools are breaking. We got a whole other toolbox. Algebra. algebra, what algebra can I do? Yeah, multiply. So squared out. So squared x squared is x minus two square root x plus one dx from one to four. You can definitely do this antiderivative. You just add one to every single power that you see. Squared x, x to the half power. So you can integrate this for sure. Oop, pi disappeared. Okay. So what about if we rotated about a vertical line or the y-axis? So rotate about the y-axis, it will look like that right there. And we're going to go, let's say we have some shape. 
try to redraw that shape. Oh, that's not great. So we have this shape right here. And when we take slices, we're going to go parallel to the rotation axis. So we're going to do horizontal slices. So that's how our slice will look right there. And our volume, we need some A and B values, some start and end. We go A to B. These are now Y values. So we're going to have pi integral A to B R of Y squared dy. Basically, where x was is now y. Now, I don't usually write these on integrals, but your a and b, your endpoints, are actually y values in this case. They always match whatever your dy, they're going to be y values. If I scroll back up, when I had dx, they were x values. So I don't usually write that in there, but definitely keep aware of that. You're not going to see that written in very frequently when you look around. So those are always going to be whatever variable your antiderivative is with respect to, those are that same variable. <coughs> Next example, volume of solid generated by rotating the region bounded by x equals y squared plus 1 and x equals 3. We want to rotate about the line x equals 3. So this is a quadratic. x equals y squared plus 1 is a quadratic. It'll be a parabola. It will be happy, except the y term is squared, not the x term. How do you graph something you're not sure about? Plot points. So a bad move would be to go ask Desmos or your calculator. What does this look like? So we're going to do instead as plot points. All right. Clueless method, here we go. So parabola, it will be a parabola. It will open in the positive direction. What is a, let's see, what is an easy, what is the smallest x value I can get? Let's start there. Can I actually get zero? Smallest I get is one. So what point does that correspond to? So x is 1, y has to be 0. Yeah, x is 1, y is 0. So we got 1, 0. All right, I can get bigger x values. How do I get uh, 2? How do I get x to be 2? Or negative 1. So we're over at 2, we got negative 1, positive 1. All right. You know it's a parabola. I don't think I need to tell you anything else. You should be comfortable graphing your parabola from here. So graph your parabola out, and then graph the x equals 3. And then I should have drawn this way bigger. So this shape is going to look very similar to the last one we just did. So we rotate this, and we're going to get, actually it won't look that similar. This will be more like a UFO shape.
So I did my best to draw a cross section sort of near the upper quarter or something right there. So I tried to draw my cross section up near the top there. So again, we're taking this shape here on the left, this two dimensional shape, and we're rotating it about x equals three right there. So we have our volume formula, pi a to b r of y now squared dy. So I need radius. Let's draw in the radius right here. So there's a radius I just drew. That will correspond to that part right there on the graph. So any questions about getting that? Oh, I drew it on the wrong side, but that's okay. Really what I drew was the, the radius on the left side right there. But it's a circle, so I could have drawn the radius any direction, and it would be all right. So this one, this is x value. The y value is the same, but I have different x values here. So that's the difference here. So I have different x values. So I need to get the big x minus the small x. So I'm going to do big x minus small x is my r of y function. Now you should be thinking, ah, we're looking for a function of y, but he's talking about x's. Yes. When I say big X minus small x, I'm not actually saying, uh, we're not gonna actually use the letter x. What we're gonna do is think about what is the big X value or the big X expression. So in this case, what is the biggest X I could get? Uh, it actually doesn't matter what, the what y value we're at. What is the big X? It's always three. Now small is on a curve, so small is definitely going to change. So what is the small x value? And if I scroll up a tiny bit, I'll label this. This is x equals y squared plus 1. So what is the big x now, or small x? y squared plus 1. So we get 3 minus 1 is 2 minus y squared is our r of y. And bring that over here. And just have to figure out A and B. Are A and B x values or y values? They're y. We're doing a y integral, a dy integral, so we're everything within <coughs> y's. So endpoints. Looking at this, we need to go, oh, how do I figure out y values? I'll draw them on the axis, the uh, y axis right here. How in the world do I get those? So we need to intersect the line and the curve. So how do I do that? The curve, x equals y squared plus one, the line, x equals three. So I wanna solve a system of two equations two unknowns. Good news is one equation is super easy. It's pretty much already solved. So I just need to solve, use that and solve the other one. So I want to intersect y equals x squared plus one. So I'm just going to take 3, put it in for x. 3 equals y squared plus 1. Let's subtract 1. 2 equals y squared. y equals plus or minus square root 2. So those are the big and small y's. Can I use symmetry here? Upper half same as the lower half. 
So I can go zero. I recommend you always just go with the positive one if, if it's a choice between positive and negative. So we're going to go 2 pi from 0 to square root 2. So you can do this integral also. What do you need to do for finding the antiderivative? Yeah, algebra. So you can try u sub, but because we got a y squared, it's not like a y hanging around somewhere, it's going to cancel it out. So it's not going to be a good candidate for u substitution. So again, I'm not actually doing calculus, we're just setting up, we're pretty much doing geometry right now. So now, what happens if there is a uh, hollow interior? So we're going to look at cutting out the middle. So I'll draw a picture of what this looks like. Now they don't actually have to intersect at points. So here's the region right here, and we're going to rotate about the x-axis. So do your best to draw the mirror image below. And then we're going to try to rotate it. So what in the world is this going to look like? Like this is one of my worst drawings ever. That's not good at all. I am having technical difficulties. That'll have to work. So this is a hollow, I don't even know what kind of shape this is, but some type of hollow shape. The way we're going to do this, we're going to do some funny math right here. you understand what I mean by this equation here? It's actually an equation with shapes. It's more fun that way. All right, so what am I saying? I'm saying that this shape is the solid shape, remove the interior. Yep, so I rotate this top boat shape thing around the x-axis here. So I just think about this shape that'll be formed there. And then I think about this point is going to look <coughs> like that. And then this point is going to look like that. 
and then I basically just do my best to redraw that right there. So I kind of take key points and do it. The analog up here on this would have been, I would have taken, if I was more careful, that point, the top point, and the bottom point. The top and the bottom point uh, stay. Yes. And then same thing, like that first example we did, wherever that is, right up here, is probably the good one to think about. There wasn't much going on. There's basically two points you had to pay attention to. And they rotate, and then I had to redraw the shape also. So we're really not doing anything more than this. There's just more, more curves and shapes. So back down to this equation here. So if you believe this equation, I'm basically going to apply the volume to every single shape right here. So if this shape is this solid one minus this solid one, then all the volumes. If I go volume of this hollow one should be volume of this minus volume of this one right here. So I'm basically going to apply a volume function of both sides. So we're going to go volume equals, uh, let's say, outer volume, parentheses solid, minus inner volume. And this is the uh, removed interior. So this idea is how we're going, or this is the idea we're going to use to get the volume of hollow objects. So we're going to have volume equals. So I need A and B. There's going to be X values just like before. A and B. Now I need two radiuses. Unfortunately, I have a small radius, which I just drew right here. That's sort of interior radius. And then I have an exterior radius, which I don't want to draw right on top, so I'll draw it next to it. There's a big radius. So these are both functions of x. So we'll go big one will be capital R of x, little one be lowercase r of x. So we've got big R and little r. So we get pi big Rx squared dx from A to B minus the other volume, pi integral A to B little r of x squared dx. So big volume minus small volume. Now, what integral property could I use to combine these into one? I could actually combine these together. Going from A to B, both dx. So I can write this whole thing as r of x squared minus little r of x squared dx. So if you want to, you can combine them all into one. Uh, the pi is just the multiplier outside, so that the intermediate step would look like you probably want to factor the pi out. Integral. That would be like the intermediate step right there. And then you could combine it together. So big R squared minus little r squared in one integral. This is the sum difference rule for integrals, basically. All right, so we'll do an example, and then we're going to go on to the next type of volume.